everyone welcome to tutorati kids okay i hope you all are prepared for our next chapter next uh, topic from our chapter real numbers okay so today what we are going to do is we are going to revisit the first lecture we are going to revisit the first lecture do you all remember what we did in first lecture yes it was introduction to a numbers it was introduction to a couple of numbers okay what were those whole numbers natural numbers integers rational numbers irrational numbers and real numbers in the end so you remember what are irrational numbers do you all remember irrational numbers the easiest way to remember what is an irrational number is to say that it is not a rational number right is this the easiest way to remember what is an irrational number yes it is to say that it is not a rational number now quick tell me what is a rational number rational number is ratio of integers right ratio of integers where q is not equal to 0 and p and q both belong to integers is this how you write rational numbers yes so our irrational numbers cannot be written in this format right our irrational numbers cannot be written in this format this is the first definition of irrational numbers What is the second one? Second one is its decimal format. Second one is its decimal format. How? What is the decimal format of irrational numbers? Do you all remember the irrational form of uh, decimal form of irrational numbers? Non re non terminating and non recurring. You all remember non terminating and non recurring this was our decimal form right so this is irrational numbers this is a rational numbers so today's lecture is going to be revolving around this particular concept first one is that your irrational numbers cannot be rational that is they cannot be represented in the form of p upon q or ratio of integers and the second concept is that the decimal form is non terminating and non recurring shall we proceed all right now before going further i would like to tell you that there are two new concepts that will be introduced in today's lecture the first concept is co prime numbers it is co prime numbers i'm pretty sure that in the previous standards you've already covered this up but we're just going to brush up the skills also we are going to be looking at a very interesting axiom what is an axiom i'm pretty sure you studied what is an axiom in lower standards it is a statement that is actually correct axiom is a statement a mathematical statement that is actually correct let's go into the details of it right about now so <clears throat> take a look at the numbers that are displayed on the screen 16 upon 36 can you divide it further can you divide it further yes you can start dividing it further it becomes 4 upon 9 it eventually becomes 4 upon 9 can you divide these two numbers further Can four upon nine be divided further? No. So these two numbers are co-prime numbers. Co-prime means two numbers having no common factors other than one. Now, if you take HCF of these two numbers, how do you take HCF of two numbers? Do you all remember HCF of two numbers? Let's try. Four can be written as two squared into one. Nine can be written as three squared into one. Right? HCF. HCF of four and nine. What is the HCF? It is the common factors raised to their least powers. Excellent. HCF is common multiples raised to their least powers. Okay. Common factors. So the common factor here is only one. That means two numbers having no common factor other than one are known as co-primes. So this is the concept of co primes okay basically they cannot be divided further is what you have to remember all right let's take couple more examples so if a and b are co prime numbers then they have no common factor other than one naturally there are examples 12 and 17 12 and 17 12 can be written as what 12 can be written as 2 into 2 into 3 Into one, seventeen. Seventeen itself is a prime number. Seventeen so is written as seventeen into one. What is common here? One and one. So HCF of these two numbers is one, right? So these two are 
co-prime numbers. Understood? Excellent. Now, <clears throat> 21 and 22, 33 and 40 and the list goes on. Okay, and the list goes on. Now, let's talk about that axiom that we were going to talk about. Okay, now what is that axiom? That axiom is, <clears throat> let P be a prime number. What is a prime number? Prime number is divisible by 1 and itself. So, P is one such number. It is a prime number. Now, if P divides A square, if P divides A square, then P also divides A. This is the axiom. Okay, this is the axiom. Now, if you look at the statement itself, we will not be able to understand what is going on here. So let's take quick examples and then see what happens. Now say for example, you have, um, say for example, you have five. Say for example, you have five. And so five is a prime number. Five is a prime number. Yes, it is a prime number. And in place of a square, say for example, I have hundred. Say for example, I have hundred. Hundred is a perfect square. Yes, it is. So. 5 is 100 is divisible by 5 100 is divisible by 5 answer kya aega? 20 excellent answer aega? 20 okay now iska square root kya hai what is the square root of 100 10 right 10 now does the same prime number divide 10 yes it does so we can say that if a prime factor a prime number divides a square then it also divide divides its root okay so this is the axiom that we are going to be dealing with let's look into the details of that axiom so here let p be a prime number so you have a prime number and if p divides a square then p also divides its root okay that is what we're talking about let's take a few examples if 2 divides 8 square 8 square is 64 you can go ahead and try dividing 64 by 2 it is divisible that means 2 also divides 8 that is its root are you all able to understand this excellent one more example if 7 divides 35 squared so 35 squared is divisible by 7 that means 7 will also divide 35 okay is the concept pretty clear excellent so let's move on <coughs> now make sure that you keep in mind these two terms co-prime numbers and this axiom because you'll be solving exercise 1.3 and these two concepts are very important while solving the sums okay so let's move on we will be brushing these concepts again while we are solving the sum okay as we are solving the sum so the first question from your exercise 1.3 is that you have to prove that a particular number is a rational now you already know that root 5 is irrational but how are you going to mathematically prove it how are you going to mathematically prove it so the proof here begins with contradiction now what does this word contradiction mean now you have a new word here contradiction i'm pretty sure you've already heard this word but what does it mean that means that whatever is to be proven whatever is to be proven assume that it is false assume that it is false contradict the question itself so what is given root 5 is irrational so you're going to contradict it by saying root 5 is rational is this a contradiction yes because we all know root 5 is in fact an irrational number but we are going to try and prove that by contradiction okay let's see how are we going to prove it <clears throat> so let us assume that root 5 is a rational number now coming to the definition of rational number you'll remember what is a rational number a rational number <coughs> is integer upon integer excellent integer upon integer where b is a non-zero integer also a very interesting fact a and b are co-prime integers now what does co-prime integers means that a and b do not have any common factors other than one co-prime means a and b do not have any other common factors other than one excellent let's move on so if root 5 is an irrational number oh sorry if root 5 is a rational number that means it can be written in the form of a upon b can it be written like that a upon b excellent 
where b is not equal to zero. That means b is a non-zero integer, and a and b are co-prime integers. Okay. So let's try to reshuffle the equation a bit. So it becomes root five b is equals to a root five b is equals to a. Now I have a root sign here. I have a root sign here, and the number isn't going to bring itself out of the root sign. So what I do is I square on both the sides. I square on both the sides. So what will happen? Root five square will be five b square is equals to a square. Now what does this imply? What does this imply? It implies that five, uh, sorry, a squared is the multiple of five. A squared is a multiple of five. It implies that a squared is a multiple of five. कैसे हुआ? Do you all know the fact that five divides fifteen? Fifteen को अगर five से divide किया जाए तो answer आएगा? The answer is three. Excellent. The answer is three. So if five divides fifteen, that means five into something will give you fifteen. Let's try to understand ये क्या बोल रहे हैं. Okay? First of all, five, fifteen. Divide करो. Answer क्या आएगा? Three. Your answer will be three, right? So we can say that five times three is equals to fifteen, right? If a number, if a number is divisible by a number, then you can say that there exists a com a multiple or an integer. Okay? You can multiply it and get the answer. बराबर. This is what it implies. Let's see how are we going to use this in the given sum. So where were we? So if five divides fifteen, that means five into integer is fifteen. So we can say that if five divides a square, five is a prime number. Five is a prime number, and a square is a square. So our axiom क्या बोलता है? It implies that five also divides a. Five divides a. बराबर. You remember the axiom? Excellent. Moving on. Now let a is equals to five times c. Again. जो लॉजिक हमने अभी प्रूव किया इफ ए नंबर डिवाइड अ पर्टिकुलर नंबर दैट मीन्स इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई एन इंटीजर हियर यूल गेट दैट नंबर बराबर यूल रिमेंबर दिस दिस इज फाइव डिवाइड फिफ्टीन दैट मीन्स फाइव इन टू समथिंग विल गिव यू फिफ्टीन सो इज दैट वॉट यू रिटर्न हियर इफ फाइव डिवाइड ए दैट मीन्स ए विल बी ऑप्टेन बाई फाइव इन टू समथिंग बराबर Is this the logic? Excellent. Fine. Moving on. So, but 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 we have a squared here. We have a squared here, and here we have only a. So what do we do? Let's try squaring it. Okay. Let's try squaring it. So what happens? Five b squared is equals to five c whole squared. Five c whole squared. We substituted this value in the above equation. We substituted this value in the above equation. So it becomes five b squared is equals to a की जगह आई रोड फाइव सी होल स्क्वायर ओके वॉट बिकम्स ऑफ दिस देन फाइव बी स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू सी स्क्वायर ओके इज द होल इक्वेशन डिवाइडेड बाई फाइव इज इट डिविजिबल बाई फाइव ओके ट्राई एंड डिवाइड बोथ द साइड बाई फाइव क्या आएगा यूल बी लेफ्ट विद बी स्क्वायर ऑन वन साइड एंड फाइव सी स्क्वायर ऑन द अदर साइड विच ऑल्सो एम्प्लाइज दैट फाइव डिवाइड बी स्क्वायर बराबर इफ यू राइट दिस फाइव इज बी स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू 5 into something that means 5 is 5 divides b square right so what happens according to our axiom 5 divides b if 5 divides a square it also divides its root the axiom excellent that means a and b now can you see this 5 divides a 5 also divides b matlab 5 is a common factor 5 is a common factor We get that five divides both a and b, but it is going against the rule of a and b being co-prime integers, na? Co-prime matlab kya? What does co-prime integer means? That if a and b, there is nothing that can be divisible. Aage iske aage divide nahi hoga. That means in dono ka HCF is one. HCF is one. But what do we have here? Five divides both a and b, so it is going against the rules of being co-prime. Both a and b have common factor five, which contradicts the fact that a and b are co-primes. It contradicts the fact that they are co-primes. That means our assumption. What was our assumption? That root five is a rational number is wrong. Therefore, we can say that root five is a general rational number. ये समझ में आया? 
two very important concepts that you have to remember is that whenever you have to prove a number irrational always start with contradiction always start with contradiction that's the first thing second thing the definition of rational numbers what is the definition of rational numbers that the rational number can be written in the form of ratio of integers ratio of integers and then try to prove that they are not in fact co-primes and therefore our assumption is wrong do you all get this okay let's try to solve one more sum so that we'll get a clear picture of what is going on here okay <clears throat> Prove that the next question is prove that three plus two root five is irrational. Now this number you have to prove that it is irrational. Again, when we have to prove a number irrational, शुरुआत कहाँ से करते हैं? By contradiction. Yes, we start with the method of contradiction. Now, how are we going to start this? Let us assume that three plus two root five is a rational number. Okay. Now definition of rational numbers. Definition of rational numbers is that a upon b it can be written in the form of a upon b where a and b are non zero integers and a b are co prime numbers okay they are co prime numbers now what happens so there exist co prime integers a and b where b is not equal to 0 such that 3 plus 2 root 5 can be written as a upon b okay it can be written as a upon b again now what let's do a thing root hai yahan pe Let's keep it on one side and let's shift the other terms on the other side. Let's try doing that. So what happens is, I first I shift the rational number onto the right hand side. Okay, so it becomes a upon b minus three plus three becomes minus three. Then, how do you solve this fraction? How do you solve this fraction? A upon b minus three. Denominator is one here. So what do you do? You LCM exactly. You take LCM of the denominator, so it becomes a minus three b upon b. Is this what happens here? Okay. So यहाँ पे आएगा a minus three b upon b. Now what is remaining here? The coefficient two. Let's move the coefficient onto the other side. So if you have two in the numerator here, ये यहाँ पे आके किधर जाएगा? In the denominator. Excellent. So this is what becomes a minus three b upon two b. Now, do you remember that a and b are integers? A and b are integers, so it implies that if a and b are integers, can you see the right hand side? A minus three b upon two b. This is also rational. अगर ये integers हैं, so this number is rational, which also implies. So if in your equation one side is rational, it implies that the other side is rational as well. The other side is rational as well. So मतलब root five is rational. This implies root five is rational, but is root five rational? No, it contradicts the fact that root five is irrational. We know as a fact that root five is irrational. So what happens? Therefore, our assumption that the given number is rational is wrong. Is absolutely false. Therefore, we can say that the number three plus two root five is in fact irrational. Okay, do you all get this? Again, let's try to recall. हमने क्या किया? When you get a number that you have to prove is irrational, देखते ही पता चलता है that it is an irrational number. But how do you prove it? You start by contradiction. You assume that the given number is rational first, then take the definition of rational numbers and try to apply it. Try to represent the number in the form of integer upon integer. Okay, and then try and prove that this in fact is irrational, but it is equated to a rational number, which is absolute contradiction. All right, did you all get this? Can we solve one more sum? Okay, let's try and solve one more sum. So the sum here is one upon root two. Now, understand the fact that your irrational number is now in the denominator. Your irrational number is now in the denominator. So यहाँ पे क्या करना पड़ेगा? Rationalization of the denominator. Have you ever heard of this word? Rationalization of the denominator. Basically, what you have to do is, ये irrational number जो denominator में है, you have to try and shift it to the numerator. You have to try and shift it to the numerator. How do you do that? Let's try and see. You simply multiply divide by the same number. You simply multiply divide by the same number. So numerator into numerator क्या होगा? Root two. Denominator में you have root two का square, right? 
the square and root gets cancelled you are left with root 2 upon 2 so now your irrational number is in the numerator and the denominator is rational this process is known as rationalization of the denominator okay you've studied this in the lower standards let's see how we use it here so first you do is rationalize the denominator first what you do rationalize the denominator how do you do that multiply and divide by the same number multiply and divide by the same number so this is what we have now irrational have proof karna hai so how we start contradiction so contradiction is let us assume that the given number is in fact rational okay definition of rational what is the definition of rational numbers that it can be represented by two co primes two co prime integers so it becomes root 2 upon 2 can be represented as a upon b a upon b are no co prime integers all right so now again yahan pe root hai and that's a coefficient so what you do is shift the coefficient onto the other side and keep root on one side so kya karenge we'll shift arrange the equation in such a way that we have root 2 on one side so let's start now so root 2 keep as it is denominator mein 2 hai where will it shift in the numerator on right hand side excellent so we'll have 2a upon b if a is an integer now tell me this if a is an integer twice a is also an integer so and b is also an integer in fact a non zero integer okay b is also not equal to zero so if both are integers ratio becomes what rational ratio becomes rational so if you have integer upon integer the number becomes rational excellent so matlab our left hand, our right hand side our right hand side is what our right hand side is a rational number our right hand side is a rational number which also implies that the left hand side is also rational it implies that our left hand side is rational but do is root 2 rational no root 2 is not rational it contradicts the fact that root 2 is irrational so our assumption that the given number is rational was wrong right so matlab 1 upon root 2 is actually an irrational number is actually an irrational number all right kids that's it for today next chapter next lecture mein we will be covering rational numbers and be prepared okay until then take care Thank you.